What is the value of truth? I am Rodrigo Gim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. For Nietzsche, truth is a mistake, an illusion to which we grew accustomed to. To understand what he means, we must first understand what he means by error and by illusion. Nietzsche shows us that the division between the true and the false is always a perspective. Because there is no final narrative, one that can hold on to being just true or just false. Every narrative is based on human cognition. It is finite just as the human being is finite in its capacity to know. Thus, taking a narrative as truth and only truth can only be an illusion. But illusions are perspectives on the real, and they are real themselves. They live, they circulate, they produce ways of life. So it is with mistakes and deceits. They are events as necessary to life as what we call certainties. For Nietzsche, to want truth to be just something grounded in history, in nature, or in a universal morality, is to be mistaken about the construction of narratives that always need subjects who co-construct them. For a long time, the dominance of metaphysical thinking made it possible to separate subject and object and that in this way the knowledge of, the, of an object, or even the knowledge that we can have of subjects, could be total and final. But if the two are just illusions, they are perspectives already mixed together, then our capacity to know becomes human all too human. As humans, we only have the ability to know objects from our own constitution as human subjects, always in relation, always in a subject-object mix that we are. The metaphysical assumption that the subject can be separated from his action, Nietzsche shows, is only a perspective, and it is inherently flawed when it supposes that we can thus know subjects and know the origins of the actions which are, in the dominant culture, placed in the interiority of subjects. Instead of asking whether something is true or false, Nietzsche asks, what is the value of this supposed truth? What does it move? What does it produce or reproduce? Nietzsche will show, for example, that the dominant values present in Christianity, as well as in dominant science, are values that devalue life, that diminish life. So, to all truth, Nietzsche asks, what is the value of this will to truth? Which value is supported by which way of life? An affirmative way of life in the world, or a way of life that lowers itself and the world with it? Metaphysics, for some millennia, at least since Plato, through Christianity, has reproduced a will to truth linked to the correction of the world by the ideal of another world. There is a slander and a desire to remake the world in the ideal of order, of a total knowledge of things as if that were possible, of rational organization where reason operates for the ideal of a universal truth. The separation between subject and object, or subject and action, is fundamental to this dominant culture because for every action in the world, it is always expected to be able to correct, or it is hoped that one truth can be replaced by another truer truth. Every subject can, in that order, align itself with his truth or with the truth of the world and thus everything can become transparent, necessarily ordered by truth. Obviously, those who are labeled as not belonging to the order of truth, be it universal or relative truth, 
and are treated as second-order beings who need intervention to follow mandates of truth or else are annihilated or removed from social life as beings who can no longer be true beings, it is easy to see how Foucault's notion of biopolitics is strongly based on the Nietzschean notion that the, re the production of truth is also the production of subjectivities, whether the subjectivities of subjects considered normal or universal, or the subjectivity of those who are to be considered abnormal, and that is why biopolitics will work to try to co-opt co them into the system or else remove or exterminate them for good. Nietzsche developed his response, his resistance to the metaphysical tradition in the concept of a superman or also called overman. That would be someone who sets in motion itself as a self-overcoming, where what is of high value to him today may not be tomorrow, because the search for better values for him would be constant. In this sense, Nietzsche still reproduces the primacy of subjectivity over life, and for this reason he was critiqued by many for remaining in the sphere of the individual solution, which is a metaphysical solution as well. But those who knew how to take advantage of what he opened up in terms of the horizon for thought, as did Michel Foucault, who takes advantage of this opening of the history of truth, of the history of productions of subjectivity, they found a lot of fertile ground to rethink truth, power, history, and subjectivity. And Nietzsche is still very relevant to understand all this because the world has changed, but some processes have only intensified. We have a society where truth is still central to everything and where human interiority is still the privileged space for thought, law and culture from which actions are thought to start in interiority. As long as we are in this society of interiority and of truth as central and as the origin of action in the world, we will still have to take Nietzsche into account to think what is happening to think that truths are productions linked to subjectivities that are also produced, that no truth nor any norm or law is sustained without subjectivities being co-produced in power relations at the same time, is something difficult because we do not have the, zero, the point zero of the origin of our ways of being, thinking and act, acting. We are always in the midst of events, and we can at most be attentive in order to seek to intervene as far as possible in these relations, assessing the values that pass through us and construct new values if possible, which will never be final because there is no resting place for those who do not want to just be another reproducer of values. Well, people, now I need you to comment and ask on Facebook or YouTube so I can answer you in the next videos. Please support this work on Patreon if you can. You can benefit from it and still allow me to continue and expand the work being done here. And see you next week.